Right, just a quick video explaining our solar setup we take when we're camping. There's the solar panel, it does all the hard work. It's 240 watt monocrystalline solar panel. It's, just a, it's not a really expensive one, but it works quite well. There's the back. At the moment we've just got the three junction boxes just running straight to the power. We've skipped over that little charge controller there, and I'll explain why in a minute. And that's running round two. That's our battery box. All right. There is a MPPT charge controller, 20 amp. That's from Tracer. And that's why we're not running the, the small PWM controller on the panel. We're just going straight to this. It's a much better unit. On this, we have the solar input, battery output, and the load output. And that's a little Ethernet cable. Cable that runs to a monitor. All that runs into our arc pack, which is there. An arc pack is pretty much a battery box, but a very, very good one. So, on these arc packs, there's a 50 amp Anderson plug for input output, its own little built in 150 watt inverter. It's a modified sine wave inverter with a USB output to charge your phones and iPads and cameras and all that sort of thing. Around here, there's a panel that just tells you your state of charge and where you're up to. Excuse my shaking for a minute. Okay, 14.3 volts, 18 degrees. It's an AGM battery, 120 amp hour deep cycle, 90% charge. It's an isolator switch. These two terminals on the other side here, they're pretty much battery terminals. So they're, they're 100 amp output. Just underneath here, a bit hard to see, but there's a little um, little spot there where you can charge it off your house. It's a, an AC charge port. All right, so it's got a built-in 6 amp smart charger in the box, as well as the inverter. And be able to give you all the information. Uh, it's got two cigarette light outputs there as well. So you can fit 130 amp hour battery in there, I think. Which is what they say. I've got 120 at the moment. That's what stores our power. I'm very happy with that. Very good. Now, from those three outputs on the solar controller in the car, oh, and on the other side of the battery there, right, I've just put three Anderson plugs. So around here, that's the load running to the fridge. Oh, there's the fridge there, 100, uh, it's not 100 anything, it's a 55 litre fridge. A little DC unit. That draws when it's going between 3 and 5 amps. That's, yeah, very good little fridge. Borrowing that one at the moment, that's my father-in-law's fridge, so thank you for that. This one here is the battery, it's just a little jumper that goes to that. That goes into the Anderson plug. And down there, the solar panel. No prize for guessing where that goes. Over to our solar panel. Now, the two terminals on the other side that you can see connected, they run across to, over here, if I can get a the light, there's our pure sine wave inverter. That's a 3000 watt inverter. Bit of an overkill, but that'll run pretty much anything we want to run, or anything we want to bring camping anyway. So that can, that can run, yeah, TVs and I don't know microwave if you're into that sort of thing. Whatever you want to run off that anyway. So that's how that works. The the battery box is mounted down with a, these two. There's one on the other side. There's little brackets. So you undo that screw that slides back. Take your battery cable off and your terminals on the other side, and that all comes out. So that can continue to charge, run the fridges, run the lights. All our lights are LED strip lights and portable LED lights. And that can sit outside the car and continue to do its thing while we take the car for all driving or whatever we want to do. That's what it's doing at the moment now. I don't know if I can get you to see this. Ah, uh, there we go. 14.3 volts, 7.8 amps going at the moment. Sort of sprinkle of sunshine. 
And there's no load coming off the fridge right at this very minute. That sort of jumps up and down. It gets up to about 11 amps when the sun's really baking it. And of course when the fridge kicks in, it'll normally sit just above what the fridge is taking out. So I can have you know, five and a half amps going into the battery and you know, three to five going into the fridge or going out to the fridge. So it continues to charge. It's doing quite well. This is my fourth day out here now. And it charges up quite comfortably every day, even if there's any scattered sunshine. So, on the back of the panel over here, we'll talk about this other little controller. That's a little PWN controller that came with the solar panel. I wasn't quite happy with the way that was working. It's, it charges. It, it works. But, um, yeah, you don't have any information apart from this little run of little lights that sort of show up and tell you if you're charging or very vaguely how much you put into your battery but um these little solar plugs i don't know what you call those but yeah those things there we just um at the moment that's just skipping past this it's not connected so um yeah we just plug them into the three junction boxes they all come together we plug it into this and then the output off that we can run to another battery if need be mates with um camper trailers then you know like to use the panel so they can take care of it and they've still got a controller running to their system. Or if we want to leave the arc pack behind and take the car, um, rather than take out all the solar controller and everything out of the car, which is sort of permanently in there, um, well, it can be removed with a bit of hassle, but yeah, that stays in there. And we've still got a controller to charge up the battery box. So this is our camp, just a tent, trailer. Another awning on the side there, room goes underneath that when it lifts up straight. And that's what we go away with. It's great for all drive, goes anywhere. Use a bit of fuel, but so what? So, I'll walk around the car for all those that are interested. No one will believe it anyway. So, yeah, it's had a bit of a lift. And, Bigger wheels, bigger tyres, roof rack with an awning. And high lift jack, long handled shovel, a few lights up the top, a few jerry cans, bits and pieces. Um, it's reliable, goes anywhere, pulled out lots of other four wheel drives. A few thankful um, Toyota, well, Range Rover and Nissan Patrol owners out there. That I've had to pull out of the shit. But anyway, enough of that. So that's our camp setup. The trailer's got lots more gear in there. That's for another video. And that's that. <laughs>